Many of us look to social media, movies, or even reality TV for advice on dating and relationships. But what if I told you that the most enduring wisdom comes from a book that's thousands of years old? Today, we're diving deep into what the Bible has to say about love, dating and building a life with someone. The Bible was crafted in a world vastly different from ours. It was a time without smartphones, dating apps, or even the concept of dating as we understand it today. However, this book of ancient wisdom has principles that are timeless, universal truths that remain relevant across millennia. Think about it this way. Imagine if you were given a complex machine without an instruction manual. You might fumble around, maybe even get it to work in some fashion, but you'd likely miss out on utilizing it to its full potential. The Bible serves as that instruction manual for the intricate machinery of relationships, offering guidance and wisdom. But of course, there's a gap. We're not living in biblical times, and modern dating, full of its own unique challenges, is not a direct parallel to the courtships and marriages arranged in ancient Middle Eastern societies. So how do we bridge this gap? How can a text that speaks about betrothals and dowries be applied to a culture of swipes, likes and DMs? The key lies in understanding the core principles, the universal truths that underpin these scriptures, and adapting them for today's world. So why should we even bother with these ancient texts? In a world overflowing with dating advice from countless sources, what makes the Bible special? The Bible offers a moral compass, a set of guidelines and standards that go beyond the superficial norms of society. It provides a foundation for building relationships that are not only emotionally fulfilling but also spiritually uplifting. But how exactly does one apply biblical principles to the labyrinth of modern dating? Strap in, because we're about to explore this intricate landscape, guided by the timeless wisdom of the Bible. First, let's talk about love and respect, something many of us would agree forms the bedrock of any healthy relationship. But what does the Bible specifically say about this? Let's look at the scriptures, starting with Ephesians chapter 5, verses 21 to 33. This passage is often cited in the context of marriage, but its teachings are universal. It talks about mutual submission between partners, out of reverence for Christ. The wife is called to submit to her husband, and in turn, the husband is to love his wife as Christ loved the church. Now, how did Christ love the church? He gave himself up for it. But let's not overlook 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 to 8, famously known as the love chapter. It defines love as patient, kind, not envious, not boastful, and not proud. It endures all things and never fails. This kind of unconditional love is not about fleeting emotions but deep-rooted commitment and enduring respect. So, when the Bible talks about love and respect, it's not just referring to some fairy tale version of romance. It's talking about a commitment to unconditionally love and respect another person, just as Christ has loved and respected each of us. Moving on to our next principle, selflessness. Again, the Bible has something profound to say about this. The Bible's guidance can be found in Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 to 4. It says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. This isn't saying that you're inferior. Rather, it's about shifting the focus from me to you. It's about putting the needs of your partner first and prioritizing their happiness and well-being. So what does this mean in practical terms? Think about it. Are you willing to compromise? Are you taking the time to understand your partner's viewpoint? Are you putting their needs ahead of your own desires? If the answer is yes, then you're on the right path to a selfless relationship, as encouraged by the Bible. Now, you may be asking yourself, these are great general principles, but what does the Bible say specifically about the early stages of a relationship, like dating? First, let's focus on intentionality. So, what does being intentional mean in the context of dating? To answer that, Let's turn to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, which tells us, Guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. It sounds poetic, but it carries a practical message. Be careful with your emotions and understand what you're getting into. Being intentional doesn't mean you must have everything figured out from the get-go. No, that would be unrealistic. 
Instead, it's about understanding the purpose of your dating relationship. Are you dating for companionship? For marriage? Or just to fill a void in your life? Guarding your heart means being clear about your intentions and not leading yourself or others on a path of emotional turmoil. And let's be real for a moment. In a world of casual flings and hookup culture, the idea of intentional dating may seem outdated or even restrictive. But by being intentional, you create a meaningful framework within which a relationship can grow, prosper, and, most importantly, honor God. Our next guideline is purity, another principle that may seem quaint to some but remains crucial. To dive into this topic, let's consider 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 18 to 20. These verses talk about fleeing from sexual immorality because our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. In today's society, sexual liberty is often seen as a measure of personal freedom. But according to the Bible, maintaining sexual purity before marriage isn't about restriction. It's about respect, respect for God, your partner, and yourself. In a relationship that aligns with biblical principles, the focus shifts from physical attraction alone to a deeper emotional and spiritual connection. And I know what you're probably thinking. It's easier said than done, right? While it's true that this is a difficult standard to uphold, especially in a society that often promotes the opposite, the Bible offers this guidance not as a rule to confine you, but as a principle to free you from the potential pitfalls that can come with impurity. So, we've looked at intentionality and purity as key guidelines for dating. But you might be wondering, does the Bible suggest who one should date? To kick things off, we're going to look at a term that might seem obscure but is profoundly important, being equally yoked. This term comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, where it is written, Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? Now, the image of a yoke comes from agricultural contexts where two oxen are yoked together to pull a plow. If one is stronger or more committed than the other, the plow goes off course. Similarly, in a relationship, being equally yoked means you and your partner share core beliefs and values. It means you're both pulling in the same direction, spiritually speaking. While it might sound exclusionary, the concept isn't about creating barriers. Instead, it's about setting the foundation for a relationship that's built on mutual values, reducing the potential for deep-rooted conflicts later on. Imagine building a house on a shaky foundation. It might look fine initially, but the cracks will start to show sooner or later. Next, let's talk about character over appearance. You might remember that popular phrase, beauty is only skin deep, well, the Bible got there first. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30 warns, Charm is deceptive, and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Similarly, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7 tells us, The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. We live in an image-obsessed world where dating apps encourage us to swipe left, or right based on a single photograph. But the Bible reminds us that lasting relationships are built on the qualities that don't fade with time. Qualities like kindness, integrity, and spiritual depth. Yes, physical attraction is important, but it can't be the cornerstone of a relationship meant to endure the test of time. So we've covered the importance of being equally yoked and prioritizing character over appearance. These are invaluable guidelines for selecting a partner but how should we conduct ourselves once we're in a relationship? Let's begin with something fundamental yet often overlooked, communication. According to James chapter 1, verse 19, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. In a similar vein, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, advises, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. What do these scriptures tell us about communication in a relationship? Well, they emphasize the power of listening, the importance of speaking with care, and the need for edifying dialogue. Healthy communication is more than just expressing your feelings. It's also about validating the feelings of your partner. 
effective communication fosters understanding and forms the bedrock for any successful relationship. But what about when conflicts arise? Yes, they're inevitable even in the best of relationships. The Bible offers some surprising yet effective tools for conflict resolution. In Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 to 17, it's stated that if someone sins against you, you should go and tell them their fault between you and them alone. If they listen, you have won them over. Furthermore, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 warns, In your anger do not sin, do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. This is a call to quick resolution of disputes, to not let resentment fester, and to maintain an environment where both parties can feel heard and valued. So, we've delved into communication and conflict resolution as two key aspects of conduct within a relationship. These biblical guidelines offer more than mere platitudes. They offer actionable advice that can be applied daily to improve and sustain your relationships. But as we wrap up this section, it begs the question, what happens if we make mistakes or if a relationship ends? The Bible has quite a bit to say about repentance and forgiveness. Colossians chapter 3 verse 13 advises, Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. In the same spirit, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 affirms, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. What these verses impart is twofold. Firstly, we must be willing to make amends, to seek forgiveness not just from God but also from those we've wronged. Secondly, it teaches the importance of forgiving not only others but also yourself. This doesn't mean bypassing accountability or shrugging off your mistakes. Rather, it's about acknowledging them and making a conscious effort to do better, underpinned by the humility to seek and grant forgiveness. So, what if the relationship ends for whatever reason? What if things just don't work out? Romans chapter 8, verse 28 says, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. This is a comforting assurance that even when relationships end, it is not a vain experience. There is wisdom to glean and growth to embrace. Failed relationships are not signs of personal failure but are, instead, experiences that can be leveraged for personal and spiritual growth. Learn from them and trust that God will use even your brokenness and mistakes for a greater purpose. As we bring this section to a close, we're left with an essential question that summarizes our entire discussion. To sum it all up, what are the key takeaways for applying biblical principles to modern dating and relationships? As we come to the close of this exploration on what the Bible teaches us about dating and relationships, let's take a moment to gather our thoughts and look back at the key takeaways. First, we've delved into various biblical principles that form the bedrock of any healthy relationship. We've talked about the fundamental importance of love and respect, a sentiment echoed in Ephesians and Corinthians. Then, we looked at the early stages of relationships, emphasizing the need for intentionality and purity. Purity isn't just a command, it's an expression of respect and love for ourselves and our partner. But remember, the Bible doesn't just guide us in choosing a partner. It also teaches us how to be a good partner. From being equally yoked in beliefs and values to putting character above appearance, the scriptural texts offer profound wisdom. We've also delved into the conduct within a relationship, discussing the biblical perspective on communication and conflict resolution. Now let's move to our second point. Central to all of this is the concept of keeping God at the helm of your relationship journey. As we navigate the waters of love, dating, and relationships, it's easy to get lost or to be swept away by the currents of emotion and physical attraction. But when God is your compass, you're guided back to what truly matters, mutual respect, unconditional love, and a commitment that stands the test of time. Finally, a word of encouragement. Embarking on a relationship journey armed with biblical wisdom doesn't just provide moral or spiritual benefits. It's a compass that directs you towards fulfilling, authentic, and lasting love. The Bible isn't just an ancient text, it's a timeless guide filled with life-affirming lessons. So as you go forth in your own journeys of love and companionship, remember to bring the Bible along as your ultimate guide. 
because when it comes to the complexities of the human heart, sometimes the oldest wisdom is the best wisdom. And now, let us end with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your eternal wisdom and guidance in our lives. We lift up everyone watching this video as they navigate the complex world of dating and relationships. May they keep you at the center of their love journey, finding partners who honor you and relationships that glorify your name. Grant them the strength to prioritize love, respect, and purity as outlined in your word. We pray for discernment in their choices and for your blessing over their future relationships. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. May your path be guided, your love be true, and your relationships be blessed. Until next time, take care and God bless.